Okay, here we go. We are uh, going to be teaching uh, 9.5, which is solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Okay. Um, this is going to be uh, one of the easier methods to solve. So let me go to share. And let us uh, bring up the lesson, which is right there. All right. And let's make it a little bit bigger for y'all to see so easily. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. So. <clears throat> Earlier in this chapter, uh, the way we have solved quadratic formulas, we had two different ways. We uh, one, we solved it by um, by uh, graphing. Okay, and then if you remember, the solutions are where the parabola intersects the x-axis. So some parabolas would intersect the x-axis in two spots. Uh, some parabolas, only the vertex touch the axis of um, the x-axis, and therefore that would be uh, one solution. And then some parabolas, when you graph them, they didn't touch the x-axis at all, which would mean no solutions, okay? Then the other one in 9.4, you were solving quadratic equations by completing the square. And in that method, you were to make a perfect square trinomial, which would factor into a binomial times a binomial. Basically, that binomial squared, and uh, then you use square roots to uh, work your way to solve for x for the variable. Okay, so here it's just a formula. Okay, and you can see the formulas right here. Uh, x will equal negative whatever b is plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a okay now you got to remember that uh, you know you have these substitutions for these letters in here uh, a is the coefficient of this second degree term b is the coefficient of the first degree term and C is the number for the zero degree term. And it's a zero degree term because there is no X here. This is just going to be a straight number, okay? So you're gonna need A, B, and C to go into this formula, and then you will be uh, good to go, okay? <clears throat> so you need to know those three things. You need to know the formula. You need to know where the A and the B and the C are coming from. Okay, so here we go. Um, when I do this formula up here, I like to make sure I have parentheses. Now you notice, uh, this was kind of nice because the red parentheses, uh, that is going to be where B goes into. Uh, the green parentheses is where A goes into, and the blue parentheses is C. Um, you're probably not going to have those colors available when you do this. Uh, you just got to make sure you substitute it correctly, okay? Um, and the biggest, I think the easiest part will be the substitution, but the hardest part is to make sure you do the math correctly in order to get your answers, okay? So here we go. We're going to use the quadratic formula to solve for the variable. So we're going to solve for x, and here is our equation. The first thing you need to identify is your a, b, and c. So um, looking here, uh, your a is an invisible one, okay? Your b will be a negative six. Now negative six is the same thing as saying plus a negative six, okay? Um, and then finally your c is positive five. So A is one, B is negative six, that's important, and C is five. Okay, now that I identified those three, I need to take those three and put them into the formula. Okay, so one will be going where the green is, here and here. Uh, oh, there we go. We got one will be going here for A, uh, negative six will be going here and here for B, and then five will be going right here. 
Okay, so there's our substitutions. All right, so now that I have this, it's like, whoa, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of. Um, so we need to do this correctly. So let's, this is the radical sign right here. Uh, let's take care, let's solve under the radical sign first. So we're gonna take this piece, we're gonna move it over here, and we're going to solve for it, and that's gonna make everything much easier. So we take this piece, we move over here, let's do it. Uh, negative six squared, that's negative six times negative six is a positive 36. Um, and they got negative four times a one times a five. Uh, one times five is five times negative four is negative 20. 36 minus 20 is 16. The square root of 16 is both positive four and negative four. So in place of this whole thing right here, I get to put plus or minus four. Here's the negative negative six from right here. Here's the two times the one from right here. Okay. So make sure you guys follow these steps in this order. It'll make your uh, math life easier and probably get the correct answer. So here we go. Um, I got to do some math. What is a negative times a negative six? Well, that's going to be a positive six. You see right here. What's two times one? Well, that's going to be two. Okay. Um, this is two problems. Why is this two problems? Because of this plus and minus four. Okay, so you're going to have x will equal six plus four over two. What is six plus four? That's 10. So you're going to have 10 over two. The other one you're going to have here is x equals six minus four over two. What's six minus four? Two. Two over two. Okay, well, Here's your fractions that you know you can simplify. 10 over 2 is 5, and 2 over 2 is 1. So your answers are x equals 5 and 1. Okay. All right, next problem up, we have, uh, we're using the quadratic formula again to solve for x, and here is the equation. We're trying to figure out what x is that will make this whole thing here equal zero, okay? So let's find out what x will be. Okay, uh, this is in standard form, by the way, because you have second degree term, first degree term, and zero degree term. And remember, standard form is, you know, where you have uh, in, in that order, okay? From highest degree to the lowest degree. Second degree, first degree, zero degree. All right, here we go. Uh, it is, it's already in standard form. Good, good. So now can we identify A, B, and C? All right. So we're going to write it so we have these pluses again, okay? So I got 2x squared. Now minus 1x uh, is the same thing as saying plus minus 1x, okay? Minus 1 is the same thing as saying plus a minus 1, okay? Um, the reason we have the pluses is so you can then identify your B, which will be negative 1. You can identify your C, which is negative 1. Your A is 2. Okay, so 2 is your A, negative 1 is your B, and negative 1 is your C. All right, so if you don't identify these correctly, the math is just not going to work out to be the correct answer. So incredibly important to make sure you get the right a b and c you're gonna need these plus signs here all right because when you look at the formula let's go back up real quick when you look at it standard form it's ax squared plus bx plus c so you see the pluses are there that's why we did that down here okay it is y minus 1x became plus minus 1x because of the pluses. And then minus 1 became plus minus 1. Okay, so here anyway, I got my a, my b, and my c. And I'm now ready to take those three things and plug it into this formula. Again, use parentheses for your substitutions. It just makes things... Uh, so much easier, and you'll probably do your math correctly if you do that. Okay, so b is negative 1, so you see it goes here and here. That's where the b goes. 
okay in the formula. Um, a is two, uh, and A goes here in the formula, and A goes here in the formula, so two and two. Finally, C is negative one. C only goes in the formula in one spot, and that's right here, negative one. Okay, again, we're going to take this uh, radical sign part right here. We're going to take it and we're going to work it out. Okay, we're going to solve this first. We'll leave this other stuff over here alone. All right, well, negative 1 squared is 1. And then, well, you're going to have negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times a negative 1 is a positive 8. So you're going to have 1 plus 8 when you work this out. What is 1 plus 8? It is 9. What is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is both positive 3 and negative 3, okay? So this makes our problem go from this big monster to taking this and putting it in place of this big guy, all right? This gets to go right here, all right? This probably should have been highlighted, so let's do that. Okay, all right. So anyway, it goes here, and now this problem is going to be uh, a little simpler. Okay, again, negative times a negative 1, that's going to be a positive 1, so you see a positive 1 here. 2 times 2 is 4, so you see the 4 here. Because of the plus and the minus 3, we are going to have two fractions here. We're going to have x equals 1 plus 3 over 4. So what's 1 plus 3 is 4. So 4 over 4 is one of your problems. And then the other one is x equals 1 minus 3. What's 1 minus 3? Well, that's negative 2. What's okay? So anyway, now I got these two fractions. And 4 over 4 simplifies to 1. Negative 2 over 4 uh, reduces to negative 1 half. So here's my answers for that. Okay, once again, man, um, quadratic formula uh, is probably the, the best way to go for most of these problems. Okay, it just depends, but uh, I think it's the easiest way uh, so far in this chapter. Okay, uh, interpreting the discriminant. All right, so this word discriminant comes along with the quadratic formula. All right, um, it is a portion of it. Okay, the discriminant is what is under this radical sign. So the b squared minus 4ac part of that formula is the discriminant. And I'm going to make that bold right there. Bam. This is the discriminant part of the formula. This discriminant will tell you something, okay? It will tell you how many solutions there will be. It won't tell you the solution or solutions, but it, it, it will tell you how many solutions there will be, okay? And it's pretty simple. If all this right here works out to be greater than zero, that would be a positive number under here. If you get something greater than zero under this uh, radical sign, uh, you will then, it will work out to be two solutions, okay? If you work out this b squared minus 4ac discriminant part, if you work it out and it becomes zero when you do the math and ends up being zero under the radical sign, well, if you have zero under the radical sign, you're only going to have one solution for x or for the variable, whatever variable is in the problem. Okay, finally, um, <clears throat> what if you work out the discriminant part here and you get a negative number? Well, guess what? It is not possible to have a square root of a negative number since that is not possible, okay? So if this discriminant is less than zero, now less than zero means a negative number. Uh, you're not going to have you're going to have no solutions. There will not be any solutions. Okay, it's just not possible. If this works out to be a negative number, it's not possible to square, find the square root of a negative number. Therefore, no solutions. Okay, so real quick, if this discriminant is uh, greater than zero, in other words, a positive number, you're going to have two solutions. If you work this part out and it becomes zero, you're going to have one solution. If you work the discriminant part out and you get a negative number here, you will be less than zero, which means you're going to have no solutions, okay? Again, the discriminant 
doesn't tell you the solutions. It, the discriminant can just tell you how many solutions you're going to have. Okay, so, so that's why we have a problem like this. Determine the number of solutions for this equation. Okay, so it's not asking you to find x. It's not asking that. It is asking you how many solutions will there be for this problem. Okay, well, just like um, solving for x in the previous problems, okay, we, we will have to make sure this is in standard form, which it is. It's second degree, first degree, zero degree. So it's in standard form. Uh, we still have to identify our a, b, and c, okay? So this is it right here. Negative one is going to be our a uh, plus four. So four will be our b. Minus four, remember, that's going to be a plus a minus four. Minus four will be our c, okay? So, um... That's interesting because the discriminant is right here. It's b squared minus 4ac, and it involves all three letters here, doesn't it? It involves all three of these numbers. Okay, so we're just going to work out the discriminant part uh, to determine how many answers there's going to be. Okay, so notice I pulled out the discriminant part right here. There it is. Okay, we don't bring out the square root sign. It's only what's under it that we work it out. Say, what's B again? Well, let's see, B is four, so four goes into here. What was A again? A was negative one, so negative one goes in here. Uh, C was negative four, it goes in for C right there. This is the problem that we need to work out. Okay, so what's four squared? 16. Now, this is interesting, think about this. What's a negative times a negative times a negative? Well, that's three negatives. That's an odd number. So this is going to be a negative something. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Well, negative what? 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So you're going to have 16 minus 16. And what is 16 minus 16? 0. So guess what? This part of the problem is 0. What does that mean? What does it mean when the discriminant is 0? It means that we're only going to have one solution. For x, okay, and you notice we don't know that one solution. We don't work it out. All we worked out in this problem was the discriminant part. Okay, same thing's gonna happen here. We, you know, determine the number of solutions for this guy right here. Okay, well, we uh, we still need to identify a, b, and c. Okay, so here we are. Here's the thing. Uh, I got a positive one for a. Minus 14 is going to be plus a negative 14. So negative 14 is my B. And then 2 is your C, positive 2. We don't need that positive 2. Let's leave it right that, right there. Okay. All right. So there it is. Uh, we need our A, B, and C for the discriminant part. So here we go. Remember, we're only doing the highlighted part. This is, the high, this is what's under the square root. We bring it over here to here. Uh, B was negative 14, A was 1, and C was 2. Okay. Well, you know, negative 14 squared. Remember, that's a negative 14 times a negative 14. And that will be positive. Okay. So negative 14 squared is 196. Over here, I got negative 4 times a positive 1 times a positive 2. Well, it's going to be negative 4 times 1. That's negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 196 minus 8, 188. Okay. Well, 188 is uh, a positive number. It is greater than zero. So what does it mean when the uh, when the discriminant is a greater than zero? It means that there will be two solutions for x in this problem right here. There will be two solutions. Okay. It's kind of cool if you do the other problems, you know, when, that we did before using the entire quadratic formula. You will already notice, uh, you remember when we do this part first anyway, uh, you will know how many solutions you should expect when you're actually trying to find the solutions. Okay, yeah, look at this guy right here. Um, determine the number of solutions. I mean, we're not solving for x. We're, we're just trying to find out how many solutions there will be okay it's in standard form yes 
Uh, being that it's in standard four, can we identify A, B, and C? So here we go. This one's nice because it has pluses already. You don't have to, you know, there's no negatives here. So you don't have to do that plus a negative number thing. Um, it's really easy. Six is your A, two is your B, one is your C. Okay, again, we're taking those numbers and we're going to pull out the discriminant part to here. Uh, B is two, A is six, C is one. Okay, let's work this out. What is two squared? Four. What's negative four times six? Negative 24. What's negative 24 times a positive one? Negative 24. What is four minus 24? Negative 20. We can't have a negative number under the square root sign. So what happens? What does it mean when this works out to be a negative number, which is less than zero? That means there will be no solutions for X. Nothing will work for X that you could plug in here that's going to make it work out to be zero. Okay, so again, uh, just a quick recap, you know, um, solving these, uh, you can solve them by completely using the entire quadratic formula. Make sure you get your A, Bs, and Cs correct. Uh, and then the other part of this lesson was uh, the discriminant part. And remember, the discriminant part is not finding the answer for your x. Uh, the discriminant part is simply going to tell you how many solutions uh, will be for your variable. Okay, and, and we did an example of each one, didn't we? Uh, I did an example here where uh, there was only going to be one solution because the discriminant worked out to be zero. I did an example here where uh, the discriminant worked out to be a positive number, which means you have two solutions. And then we also did the, uh, an example for you here where the discriminant worked out to be a negative number, which means no solutions. All right. Enjoy your lesson. Peace out.